Hey guys, welcome to this Tech to Geek video. Today I'll be doing an install guide for my um, CH Mod Labs branded Sigma Cool GPU mount. So it basically lets you use an Antec Cooler 620 or a Corsair H70 cooler to on, as of now, GF110 and GK110 GPUs. Today I'll be doing the install on a EVGA GTX 580 Superclocked Edition and um, let's see what we can do. So here I have the actual stock GTX 580 superclocked uh, air-cooled card. Uh, I've already removed the cooler uh, and all of the main components myself because I've been doing testing with this card. But I'll show you a bit of uh, the general uninstallation of the air cooler and there's a better guide I'll link to in the description. So let me take the top off here. As you can see, this slots off. Really, the only way you take this off, this off is there are tabs um, here, here, here. There, there are about eight of them, maybe a little more than eight of mine. It's been a while since I've taken it apart, but uh, that's how many tabs you have to unscrew. And uh, all in all, that cover comes off very easily just by removing the screws on the side. So there's screws on this border uh, of the memory cooler that actually releases that top cover without taking off the actual IHS uh, and or the stock air cooler. So this uh, is the stock vapor chamber cooler that the GTX 580 and 570 use. So it's pretty beefy. You can see here that it's where the coolant goes in and there's actually still thermal paste on it. But it's a nice big uh, vapor chamber and although it's effective it's still, you know, the car still runs pretty hot with it, especially in terms of overclocking. So you can kind of see through it there that's cool, but it's very inefficient. So I took that off, and uh, really, as long as you, that just sits on top of the GPU right there, and it lifted off quite easily, uh, surprisingly easily, actually. So this is what the car looks like with no actual stock cooling. And uh, one of the things I do uh, like about the Sigma Cool Mount that I've designed is that it allows you to use this stock memory cooler, so you don't have to go out and really void your warranty by gluing on a bunch of aftermarket heat sinks and things like that. So this is the old Sigma Cool mount. You can see that there's this etched portion in the side right here. I, now, now uh, the reason there were so many delays, guys, is I had to uh, streamline production because it used to be, it, take, it took about 10 minutes to make one of these just to etch this portion here down with the laser and I was just really inefficient. So the new design, as you've, as you've probably already seen on the OCN thread, is I just removed that. And, really, and structurally, that doesn't compromise the mount at all, because there's still four points of solid mounting, and these tabs are still pushing down all around it. And really, even with that etched portion, it, it wasn't pushing down on the tabs under the two tubing connections. And just a bit, I'll bring over an anti Cooler 620, and I'll show you why I had to do that. So for now, I'm going to take the card out, and I'm going to bring over my... Antec Cooler 620 that I've actually been doing some prototyping with. So the stock, uh, the fans already installed. The stock uh, thermal compound on it is has been since removed since I installed and installed this multiple times. So this is the Antec Cooler 620. Let me focus in here for you guys. So that's the Antec Cooler 620. You can see the logo there. Cooler. H two O six twenty. So, this is the uh, the the actual heat spreader. I've taken off the factory installed um, thermal compound, which is actually quite good. I, I ran this with the stock thermal compound for about a month uh, while I was testing it, doing some benchmarking, and it worked great. Uh, however, if you do uh, have like Arctic Silver Five or some higher end thermal compound, I would recommend putting that on. Now. The reason that uh, the design has changed is it's kind of hard to see with the uh, contrast here. But you can see these, these tubes here, right? And there are actually two washers here and here. You really can't see that one, but those hold on these connections and allow them to swivel. And the problem is, is that those are slightly, they, 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 in, they increase the actual diameter. So the distance in between here is actually only a quarter of an inch. But with those washers, it takes that down about to a sixteenth of an inch. So I initially was like, oh, I'll just etch that down, but uh, obviously that didn't work all too well and it took way too much way too much time just to manufacture them. So I just turned the light on for you guys. So 
So here's the cooler, and, or the cooler mount, and the actual water block. So what you do is you place it on top and slot it on with the uh, with the gap facing the tubing, and then you simply push it over everything and then rotate the mount so that all the tabs line up. And uh, this is very important because that's what that, that's what's actually applying pressure. So you push down, and the mount it won't be perfectly aligned, but as long as that as long as this is generally on the heat spreader. Uh, of the actual GF110 or G GTX1280 chip, uh, you'll be just fine. Because you see, if you twist it too much, then you start hitting the tube and it doesn't go. But the mount is designed to work just fine. I've tested it myself. This is actually the third time I've installed it with this specific method, and it works great. So that's how you prep it. And uh, now I need to install some thermal compound on the card itself. Alright, so now I'm going to install some thermal compound or apply it, whatever you'd like to say. So, um, in terms of removal from the stock, uh, just for the stock compound, uh, just 99% isopropyl and paper towels, and we make a little fold. Anyone who's installed a, a, an aftermarket CPU can learn how to do that. So, that's pretty basic, and I've already done that. So, I'm going to move that out of the way. And here, I just have some, uh, it's fairly basic Zalman cooling compound. It's not, not nothing fancy. Um, I just had it lying around. It works quite well. Um, if I had some Arctic Silver 5, I would have used that, but um, I'm all out because I just reinstalled each uh, 100 on my CPU and my secondary rig. So I'm going to move this card up here and I'm going to do a bit of a time lapse, plopping on some CPU thermal compound. Alright guys, so now it's time to actually install the mount. Uh, this process is a little bit tedious, but uh, for now I'm just going to go over kind of the, the components that will come with your actual cooler when you order it, and uh, the basic way that I use as a single person to install this mount. Uh, really, if you have a second person that can help you out, it, it does help quite a bit. Uh, but now I'm going to go over just what comes with each cooler bracket, and uh, here we go. So, first off, you get four... Uh, 440 thread black oxide mounting screws and four matching nuts to go with that. Uh, really, I, I don't recommend using any tools with this uh, because tightening by hand as much as you can is really all the stress you would want on the GPU itself. So the tools aren't really necessary. If you have an Allen key uh, that does fit the metric socket of the actual uh, screws, I that, that's great, but I really, I, hand tightening is just fine. And uh, here is, of course, one of the Sigma Cool mounts. So that's everything that comes with it in the mail. And, oh, there, and uh, here we go. Just to make sure I didn't knock anything off. There are no components. All right. So here we go. So first off, you're going to want to, um, oh, and I forgot, there's also a back plate for GK110 cards. So. First off, you're going to want to pick up the card, take the back plate here, and orient it so that the short side is the side that you're actually going to be installing with. So, as you can see, the, the corners here are slightly shorter than the ones up here. So, the short side will simply fall right onto there. And that's the back plate. And that will shift a bit when it's all tightened down. Everything will go well. So I'm going to hold that on, flip everything back over, 
and make sure everything's sitting nice and flat. All right, so I have clearance with all the holes in the back plate, and now it's time for the actual cooler. So, uh, orienting the cooler when you're mounting is also another important thing. Because obviously you want the tubing coming out this way since the car will be mounting in this way into the PCI slot. So, uh, you, what I have found is it's best to kind of have the, uh, the tubing come around here and have the fan pre-installed so everything's a little higher and have the radiator face down tub tubing connections up uh, like so. So now, I'm going to take the cooler and I'm going to slip it on and give it a slight rotation uh, as I demonstrated earlier. And now I'm simply going to place it down, rotate a little bit to make sure there's good contact between the thermal compound and the cooler. And now holding the mount in place, I'm going to find the four mounting screws and insert them one at a time. So there is the first mounting screw and you want to make sure that the cooler doesn't rotate because there is a lot of weight behind it with that pre-installed uh, closed loop radiator. So there is the first screw that's in. You can really kind of hear it drop as well because the heat spreader is pretty noisy when you you drop in a screw. Alright, so back to installing the cooler. So you install uh, each of these four screws and really uh, it, it, the cooler, if it moves around, the, uh, the, the, really the mount will guide everything into place. So if the mount is in the right place, all the screws will fall right into place. And you should hear a nice little ping when everything goes in. And I, I do recommend working on a glass table and or an anti-static mod pad. And some of you guys probably have mod pads, but I'm not, I'm not quite, quite that fancy. And it is a little precarious at first because the mount is uh, prone to moving around. Once everything's in place, it's quite easy. So I'm going to come back once I have all these screws inserted and I'll show you the backplate installation. Alright guys, so I have all four screws inserted and I was also able to install the back plate. And uh, one thing before I tighten everything down, just to make sure there's good contact uh, between the GPU and the cooler is just to smoothly kind of rotate everything around and swish everything around a bit. And then rotate it and do another check of all the tabs. You want to make sure every one of these tabs is over a corresponding tab on the cooler. That's very important for contact. Now, I'm going to flip this over and show you the back plate. And this is also a very important part of installation. Just kind of pressing it down to make sure it doesn't lose contact. And gently roll everything up. And do one last check for contact here. I know I just touched the uh, PCI header, but that's alright. And then just as a CPU heatsink, you just want to lightly tighten corner to corner with this mount here. And it is made of uh, high grade acrylic, so there shouldn't be any warping. It might warp a very small amount, but uh, any warping that you do n uh, witness occurring should not be an issue at all. Just tighten that by hand until it hurts your fingers, and that should be more than enough tension to keep that cooler on the GPU. Alright, so that seems pretty tight. Now I'm going to hold it by the cooler mount itself to make sure nothing shifts, and nothing shifted. And uh, that's mounting the cooler on. Alright guys, so after a few final adjustments I was able to get the cooler perfectly installed with uh, really minimal tension and uh, the back plate is on so everything is uh, nice and supported and uh, this is what it looks like when everything is said and done. And uh, Some of you might question the distance here in between the PCI slot. Uh, I will assure you everything will fit just fine. Uh, everything's been machined uh, and designed to fit perfectly. Uh, so, now uh, the next part of the video will be showing you how to actually install this in your PC. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you how to uh, install this in your PC. So, uh, when the hardest thing about this is balancing the weight of the radiator. Uh, the tubes are pretty long, but they're not 
quite long enough that they're not in the way and so this process is a little clumsy but um, I'll show you basically what you should do so if you rip the card from the back with two fingers like so obviously not much touching the uh, clip or anything and see the rad here I'm going to set the radiator like so just over the hard drive base, and this is a half 922 in bed. This this fits quite well in this case. So now, bear with me. I'm going to slowly lower it into the slots that I would like to have it installed in. And just like any other card, make sure everything's ready to go, and then lightly, with a tiny bit of pressure. Noted the PCI slot is open. Everything slots right in. I pull the clip, and everything is good to go. Now, in terms of placing the radiator, uh, the best place I've found for this to fit is right up uh, in behind the five and a half inch drives. And the reason I, I, I like this spot is it's quite spacious and it allows for a nice, clean, cool airflow. You definitely don't want to be recycling hot air from uh, say a cooler up here, you, you want to recycle in inner case air to push through this radiator. Uh, another option for other cases could be in the front here, a lot of people put it right in front of the drive bay uh, cooler, it just, there's a big piece of metal here so I can't do that. And another option I'm looking into is actually mounting in the bottom. So since I'm not using an absurdly long power supply, uh, with moving some cables around you could very well mount directly to the bottom and then have air come up the case. Another very popular option for SLI configurations with and it's a cooler 620s is to have the CPU venting out the back or to just have an exhaust vent here and to run both of these or if you're one or two however many coolers you have and just mount them straight on, on top and then have them draw air in from the top and then have it exhausted out by whatever you're using. Uh, I pull air in through this H60 and then vent everything out the back, or at the top, I should say. Um, so when I'm folding or doing anything high-end, there's hot air coming here from the GPU, pulled out, hot air from the CPU, pulled out, and then there's residual airflow from a side panel fan pushing on the VRM. And uh, I do, as I've noted in earlier videos, it is smart to use afterburner when overclocking, and uh, you want to use a manual fan profile and really make sure that this stock fan here is still going to cool um, any... Uh, of the, still, the stock here, I mean, you still want to be nice and cool because uh, that can be an issue, but as long as you have a case with decent airflow, just some air blowing over that, uh, along with the stock fan, you should be just fine. And it's another uh, advantage of using Sigma Cool because it allows you to keep the stock fan and everything here. There's no reason to spend another $10 on a fan, another 10 on VGA heat sinks to keep everything cool around that. Hey guys, so this is uh, everything booted up with the Sigma Cool GTX 580 installation with the liquid cooler. And I've been running a uh, folding at home instance for a little bit now. And uh, you can see we're running at, uh, we're doing a pretty serious algorithm here, of, uh, about a four hour workload. And uh, if we look over here at MSI Afterburner, this is its stock. Uh, so the temperatures will be slightly lower. You can see um, this is where we started out at around 30 Celsius. Uh, which is substantially below what uh, well, well, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius below what a 580 would usually idle at. And you can see the usage went from 0 to 99 percent. So basically we're maxing out the GPU right now. Fan speed is, is it ma manually enabled 50 percent. And we'll see memory usage not, uh, not absurdly high but the clock is running at a, its full potential. The shader clock is good. And uh, you can see we're running at a stable 53, 52 degrees Celsius at absolutely full load. So the cooler is doing its job, and this is a performance equivalent to a thousand dollar and or you know high hundred dollar range water cooling setups. Uh, and all you did was use a Sigma Cool mount and um, a Antec Cooler 620 and or a newly revised Corsair. H70. And I do want to make that distinction. Only the latest revision of the H70 is known to work uh, well here. And essentially it is the exact pump that uh, the Antec Cooler 620 is. So that's pretty much whether you're a Corsair or Antec fan.
I would have gone for the Corsair variant if I knew it was identical at the time when I started designing this and I actually bought the test cooler but I bought a 620 and that's what works. So this is uh, the high end performance of the Sigma Cool Mount by CH Mod Labs with an Antec Cooler 620 on a stock clocked GTX 580 running folding at home at full load uh, at 53 degrees Celsius. Thanks for watching guys.